This is my first presentation in English. I usually do it in Dutch, so I might have to look for words once in a while. Um, my name is Hans Hiedink. And my company has two branches. One is the Midan Institute, which is actually philosophy. And the second one is Orgis, and it is actually web development with a lot of CVCRM. And uh, today I'll present you something about what happens if you combine uh, philosophy with web development. And what results could be for you as well. I participate in uh, the Trinfinity Network, some people might know that. It's an international organization or a network of uh, uh, web professionals. And I also participate in, in Civic Co-op once in a while, which is known a bit better in, uh, on the Civic Co-op. The agenda we have today is quite uh, broad. We start with philosophy. We, and then we go to a um, generic method to solving problems by using uh, a certain philosophy technology. Then we go to data quality in CVCRM by using that method, method and change it a little bit and uh, adapt it to a CVCRM extension. And then we go back to philosophy again and I'll show you how you can get an insight in the gap between system and reality. And everyone who uses systems will uh, see that there often is a gap. The Medan Institute, which is the philosophy part, uh, will give, uh, gives a different perspective on uh, how you perceive uh, your daily life and your rea reality by using four different words. And they are symbolized by these four uh, symbols. And uh, today I'm going to introduce only the first word for you and only scratch the surface for this first word. And if you see, uh, use those words, they're just words. They're not truths. They're not uh, anything that you have to use. They, you can use it. They're just a method methodology. So the first word we're going to use will help will help you will get more insights in what we do not know. We can get more insight in what we do not know when we make it visible. We don't have actually proper words for what we do not know. We have the word unknown, but actually that's a negative word. It's not knowing. If you make it a positive word, your mind sees it as something more positive, as something you actually can explore. And that's what we have to do. We're going to use a word for it and a symbol. Because in some cases you want a word, and in other situations a symbol is nicer to have. The word is called pu, pronounced in Dutch, not in English, it helps. Um, it means everything I do not know or understand at this moment. So what this um, says is everything I do not know or understand at this moment, because what I do not know, you might know or uh, it's a personal word. Every one uh, knows something differently than the other. Everything means that it's a um, collection. It's like a mathematical collection. It doesn't exist in reality. It only exists in our, our minds, which when we're going to use this word. And um, at this moment means, well, it can change. What I do not know now, I can uh, no, tomorrow, or vice versa, but I think I know now. I can discover I do not know at all. So what you have here is a personal changing abstraction, and there are not many words that have those three qualities. But I think it's an interesting way to, to, to use words. The symbol, as you already saw a little bit, is a very simple symbol. It's a circle with a dot. We're going to use it more. What happens if you use words? What does our mind do with words? When I walk into nature, I have zero species knowledge. 
I just experience the, the, the colors, the atmosphere, the sounds. It's just what, well, it, it's, it's, it's a nice experience, but when I walk into the, to the nature with someone with really proper species knowledge who can give words to lots, uh, everything we see in here, things change. What you're going to perceive is you're going to notice uh, a certain uh, colors, certain species. You're going to notice the sounds of the, of the birds singing. Well, if you di didn't know those words, you heard a lot of sounds and it can be beautiful. But then someone says, okay, this is, is, this is that and that bird. You're going to re hear it because words do that to you. They give they give a more in-depth uh, in experience. I'm not saying that it's better, because next time I have lost um, uh, those words again. So I'm uh, walking through the forest again with my same uh, experience with not knowing all those species. And that's very nice as well, but it's, it's nice if you can. It's the same as you walk in your daily life, in your city. When you're going to your work or go and have, are busy, you just, you just see the buildings and the people around you and the things you have to do. But when you start, uh, you have a bit more time left and you start to look around and you know this word pu and you know this symbol and you're going to start noticing the things that actually you do not understand. So how it all got here, where, who you're going to meet today or tomorrow, what you're going to learn, all the things you actually don't know. When you give it a word and a symbol, you start noticing it and that, that uh, changes your uh, uh, experience, changes how you see uh, your life. You can actually see it as a box. It's a collection, and more, almost a mathematical collection. When you know the things you don't know, and uh, you give it a name, you give it a symbol, but you have no time for it at the moment. Well, you can place it in a box in your mind, and it will stay there. What unknowns often uh, do to us, they are, they are worry us. They are uh, lurking down the surface, they are doing stuff there and they are uneasy. Once you give them a name and you give them a symbol, you can stop worrying because you know uh, you, have, you have them, you know what they are. There are unknowns, there are pus in your system and you can place them in your box and you go just focus on what you're doing. And when you have a little bit of time left, you get all of them out again and you can place them in your city again and to start, okay, what can I actually do with them now? Some philosophers look at knowledge as an island and around it there's a sea of unknown. What I actually give you with the word and the symbol is a way to, to have a boat on that sea and just to, to look around. And when you do that, you start noticing that it's, in most cases, actually much more like this. That you actually see, okay, I'm living in this world where there's few things I actually know and most of them I don't. And what happens with computer systems, people normally live in, in the islands and are able to look at the sea and they wonder, okay, how, what, what will, how will that impact us? The computer systems, they don't. They only live in the islands and there is their if-then structures and with their data arrays and they stay there while our whole experience is, is everything with lots and lots of unknowns. And the more we use computers and the more we use systems, the bigger this problem becomes. There is a huge gap between, between systems and our perceived uh, reality.
what I show you now is a generic method. This is uh, part two of the agenda. How you can use uh, this uh, pu value on solving daily life problems and problems in your work. This is normally is a two hour workshop, so I have to go very fast. What I ask the people normally is to, uh, I'll give them a paper and a pencil, that's everything. And what they do, I ask them just to draw a line in the middle. And then I ask them to write a, a personal or a work problem on the left, in the top left of the, of the paper. <coughs> then I ask them to draw themselves in the top uh, in the middle of the upper part, because like pu is a personal word, I believe every problem you have has to do with, with you. You have to, it's all how you perceive your world and your problem, and that's how you, it can help you. So you yourself are part of the problem and part of the solution. Then I asked to draw or write everything that has to do with the problem, with words or symbols, very tiny, very just pinpointed. It's, it's a bit like a mind map, but then there's a person in it as well. And just try to, try to make it complete, make the, to touch almost everything that has to do with the problem. And it can do with emotions, it can do with people around you, it can do with flaws that you perceive that you yourself have or others have can have to do with rules and money lots and lots of things then i ask people to place pu signs next to them so what's unknown try to see you know, um, uh, what of these things there is an unknown for you and make uh, place a symbol there uh, there should at least be one, because otherwise it wouldn't be a problem. But in most cases, most people will have a few or more of those uh, symbols on, on, on their paper. And then I ask them to add a sequence number to it that is random. It's not based on priority, just a random number. And the first, then the next step is I ask them to try to specify what they actually do not know, to my, try to make it, describe it as clear as possible for themselves. And um, so you get, you take some time, you make your unknowns, try to make your unknowns visible and to describe them. Well, that's then also for all the other few items. And the next step is what you can do with those items. There are several things you can do. The first thing you can do is, okay, now I have described them. I see, I actually can solve them. That, that, that happens when you take time and you describe your unknowns. What you then do is add an S to next them. I'm able to solve them. The next step you do is, okay, I can not solve them, but I can circumvent them. I can, I can maybe avoid them, but it could be something like, I have a supplier which not really has done his job very well, so I'm not going to kick him out already, but I'm going to, to, to hire another for the next job just to see how that one works. So you're going to circumvent this, this, this unknown. And the third one is acknowledge. And acknowledge is the most interesting one in my perspective, because if you cannot solve them or you cannot circumvent them, you actually have to acknowledge them. But that's actually a very big step, because before you started, it was an, an, an unknown and it could uh, be uh, under the surface, it could trouble you, but you hadn't specified it. And now you're already in the phase, okay, there are problems for me solving uh, this, this issue and I can't. 
and I have to acknowledge that I can't. And you know also what you have to acknowledge, what you can't do. And then the interesting part is, well, what you're going to do with it. Well, what you could do is ask for help. That's a simple one. Thanks. Uh, or you say, okay, I asked for help and nobody could. So that might mean that's, that I cannot uh, get to my goal at this moment. So it has an uh, impact on your prioritization. You can say, okay, there are other problems which I need, uh, which I can solve, and I'm going to focus on that first. So maybe next year I can solve that I have more information, I don't know. It has an impact on your prioritization. But can you also say, okay, I actually need to solve something like this now, but I can't, and this is why. And you can look back at your original question and say, okay, I actually cannot solve this question. I can't, I have made it clear. So maybe I can solve, uh, do something else and make it a little bit, um, uh, make uh, solve a, a, a different question, which is closely to what clo uh, close to what I actually wanted, but would also help me. So the method will uh, give you more insight, give you more tools to 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 handle this with the unknown and which what you do not know. Well, you can. They will uh, turn into three lists. And the first one is easy. You can solve them. The second one, well, uh, if you're alone, then you probably know it. But if you're in a system, like in a CRM, and you have identified, oh, we need to circumvent uh, a problem like this, do you have to communicate it? So it will be a, a second list, but you have to communicate it to, uh, to others. That's, that's it's a better tool to, to avoid the this person or this 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 issue and the second list is acknowledge which you already said well that has an impact on how you perceive the whole of your uh, problem in the first place so what i um what i are often asked when we get here is to look back at your original image and in, in a lot of cases people already would uh, draw the problem uh, differently. Different issues, what they see, are keeping them far for solving that, that issue. So that's very short for this two hour course. Uh, so how do we get here to data quality in CVCRM? Well, simple, we're transforming this into a CV Serum extension. And it will get, uh, get you all kinds of p values. And all of these colors have a meaning, I'll show you uh, soon. And here you see the, the uh, a part of a CV Serum uh, contact field. And I'll show you how, what I did with the extension. When you start the extension, all contacts have a p-value there, and it's well, it's sort of yellow, and it actually means no one has added, looked at it, in, uh, no one has added an unknown to it. So actually, the unknowns for the person are unknown, so that's why there is a p-value there. It couldn't be something else because you don't know if there's something missing or something people do not know. There are actually uh, custom fields that the extension makes and they have placed them on the top of the, of the screen next to the value. And what happens is you can edit it. And here you see uh, the different PU fields. And you can say, okay, how much unknowns is, do I have for this contact? And when you're going to use it, is people are busy, 
working on a, uh, a mailing that has to be finished in two hours. They're very busy, they're looking at 50, 60 people. Do they need to get that mailing uh, today or not? Uh, and they, so they look at a lot of contacts, but they have no time to really investigate. They see, okay, something is missing, and they even see what. And with this a method, you can very simply say, okay, I know something is wrong. The phone number is wrong. I just called them and it didn't work. But I have no time to, to, to look it up. So I have to notify it here. You can use the note fields for this, but the, um, this one will uh, make it more visible for everyone who uses the system. You have uh, a p-value there, this one you do not see, so everyone sees, so, okay, someone in the CRM has notified an unknown or an, an, a doubt about this person. Well, you can ignore it, you're free to do that, but it's very easy ju to just mouse over it and then just see uh, what this person has said about uh, the contact. And then you can choose what you do with it. If you have a little bit more time, you're going to look at the phone number, and if you don't, well, you ignore, ignore it. So, you can also choose a different value for those uh, P fields. And what then happens is the size of the, the, the unknown actually is, is visible. So if you have a, a, a big symbol there, well, there's something very wrong with this contact. And uh, if it's small, well, it's probably a tiny problem. What it helps you to do is here is so from people have a very simple way to communicate to others there's a doubt or a known with this contact and you can organize uh, like say a friday uh, afternoon we're going to solve try to to look at all of them and solve them at one time it makes uh, the doubts from the the, the 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 people using the serum much more visible well if the system is perfect of is this context perfect, all the fields are filled in, there's no problem and you have identified it. If you check, check uh, the value no unknowns, you see a symbol, another symbol, not a pu symbol, but another symbol. And other pu that's also a way to communicate. This is a, a contact with, which has been looked at and it's, it looks fine. Now, we also, in the method, we had three things which you can do with the uh, with unknown. The, things, the same we have here. Well, a wrong phone number you can solve. So people looking at all those P fields can, ident can categorize them and say, okay, this one we can solve. What happens then? The icon turns blue. If you choose a circumvent, the icon can becomes red. And that's very uh, interesting because someone is looking at this contact and uh, sees a red icon. Okay, I have to circumvent something about this person. And you mouse over the, 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 the symbol and you see, okay, what was the problem? What was the doubt someone had about this person? And is that a reason for me to circumvent this person or something with this person as well? So it's a very simple communication of doubts between users of the CRM. And the third one will make a green uh, symbol. And that uh, is, is the acknowledged one, which I also for CVCRM, I think it's the, the most interesting one. Because what it shows you is like, it could be something like this. This person asks for discounted memberships because he has trouble uh, payment due to recent disability. But our CRM has not been configured like that. And personally, the, the person using it thinks, 
actually it's reasonable for him to ask. So we, I cannot solve it right now because there's no programmers in, in, in our organization or uh, people who are, uh, can install a discount uh, extension. I cannot circumvent it because I want to help this person. I have to acknowledge it and we have actually have to do something. This is actually a gap between how our system, system currently works and the reality from which I as CVCRM user are, are, are seeing it. And I actually want to endorse it, but at this moment I can't. So this green icon, so this green, if this green icon, well, if you're uh, busy doing something, you probably don't have much about this information. But if you can search to those green icons, it can really help you to get to perceive uh, how actually how good your system is relating to the problems that the, the users are, 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 are seeing uh, uh, daily, in daily use. So all those speed changes um, create an, uh, an activity. Now the boot changes activity. And you can always see who changed what to, to what. So you can also see, okay, this, what, what happened to, uh, to those speed fields. And you can also see, okay, this happened to it and this is the history of it. And uh, you can also say to people, you, you said it to uh, circumvent, but I disagree with it. You have tools to use uh, to, to use the doubts of your organization and to do something with it. They're just uh, uh, custom fields so you can search on them. This is a part of an advanced search screen. And you can use this with, uh, uh, with a profile. So here you can manage if you have just searched on, 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 a, on a certain category, you can manage those spew fields in a description and action in 50 uh, at a time. So this is a day you can, a way you can say, okay, on Friday I'm going to manage all those uh, pu uh, soul fields. You search them and you uh, use the, the profile just to look all those people and okay, I'm going to solve, find the telephone number and, and click them as uh, no value or no poo after that. If you have added the data visualized extension, which is a very nice extension, and you add the, the, the data quality extension, you also have some extra reports. And there you can uh, uh, see which does it work? Yes. Where you can see, okay, these are the people with different pu values. This means it's the size of the pu values. And these are, okay, these are acknowledge and solve and uh, circumvent. So you can uh, very easily see who is what, and it's also a different way than to, to, to actually do something about it. And if you uh, only use the acknowledge once and you do this once a week as, as a manager, you can actually see, okay, we have a system, we have problems, certain problems with it. And when you endorse the people to actually express their doubts, then you will get a lot of insights in, from uh, the users, how, uh, which problems the system actually has compared to, to what the people you want from, from the system. And I think that helps in to, to, to seeing uh, well, how good your system at this moment is. And then you have a choice. This does, uh, the, the example I just show, it's actually quite easy to add a discount membership for that person or add the discount uh, uh, extension. So that one actually would be solvable, but not for the person one who was using it. But in, an, in a meeting you can say, okay, actually that's a good way to, 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 to handle this problem. And you get uh, 
uh, more tools. So, what uh, is advantage of visualizing doubts and unknowns of CVC model users? What it will do is it gives a standardized method to handle exceptions. I have uh, added this, uh, I have two customers already for this uh, uh, extension. And what some of them actually um, did was um, they, 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 they found out that uh, uh, the import of a legacy membership system um, gave, in some uh, situations, gave problems. The, the, the data was not really uh, done in the same way as CVCRM did. And what they then did is they searched for those people and gave them immediately gave them uh, a PUF value. And so everyone in the CRM immediately saw, okay, we have a problem with this membership. And if someone calls, you can act on it immediately because you immediately see it. And, and, and then, then they, uh, they solved it just by going one and one, but it took, took them weeks, but it took them only five minutes to make it uh, known by to, to other users of the system. And I think it's a very nice way. You can do it as well if you place them in a custom group or make a custom field for it, but then it's not immediately shown to other uh, CRM users. So it will also give you some insight in the amount of frustration of your employees, which can be helpful, but can be also that you actually do not want to know about it, but that's, that's your choice. And um, it gives you information how often the system does not match your daily needs. And by doing this, by giving this tool, it will, will, will help to get the data quality uh, higher because people have the means to say where it doesn't fit in a much, much easier way. So in the end, it actually will give insight in, in the gap between system and reality. It will make that as, as humans normally do, uh, have, a mean, uh, have some means to look into the sea of announce and uh, and, and make the system acknowledge those. Uh, actually acknowledge that there is a sea of unknowns uh, around us. And well, that's my presentation. That's done fast enough. It's, um, here are my uh, details. You can if you're interested, we should have a talk uh, today or tomorrow. Do you have someone have any questions? Uh, I, I do actually. Can you talk about how it is actually implemented um, with data? So, for example, if if we're faced with a um, hundred thousand records and we have no idea, we don't know what we don't know. Yes. Um, how do we? How would we implement this such that we can qualify each individual contact as potentially having an issue without necessarily having to touch each individual contact record? Is there a way to implement it more on mass? There are, well, this is only a, um, a first step I made to this extension. There are, I'm thinking about lots of different directions. Mm -hmm. One is actually to to be able to configure what you actually want uh, a contact to be to have. And if then you run a system and if the contact doesn't have a phone number, then you then it's uh, um, then you can make a, a P value automated for that. Mm -hmm. But how it works now is actually everyone starts just with this uh, uh, yellow icon and you during daily use, it will gather the, the doubts and unknowns of the individual users. Mm -hmm. And what I also want is to, to expand it because I think, especially if you use it in this cases, you actually want the same system for, uh, on a case as well. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, especially when you do it there, then I think it has really added, added value. And 
there are probably other parts of the system where you want something similar. One of the customers that already uses it has just entered uh, the room. Can you... Uh, yeah, um, yeah um, not, not thousands of records, but one of the clients that I've implemented on the system for is the National Consumer Federation, which is a grassroots consumer organization. They really go back 40 years. So there was a mixture of paper, um, complicated way of adding subscriptions, so they had various prices and, and subscription fees for whether or not you were a couple, an associate, um, uh, a company, an organization, and things like that. So eventually they realized that they sort of needed to move on to a sort of a bit more of a, an organized way of doing things. So once I started doing the import into CBCRM, I realized that none of, well, a lot of the subscriptions didn't match at all. And a very practical problem there, for example, you can have couple subscriptions. So you have two people on one subscription. The problem is with consumer-related issues is that nobody's really interested anymore. There's lots of old people writing letters to people and doing things like that. So you have the situation where you might have a couple where you're not sure if the partner's actually died. So by them saying, adding the food to that particular field, to the subscription field, when that person the next is in contact, we can say, without being rude, but <laughs> is your partner dead? Because if he is, then we can <laughs> reduce your subscription fee. But it, it's been things like that that has been incredibly helpful because it's a it's a, it was almost an organic way of cleaning your system. Mm -hmm. So I basically selected all the, um, you know, a particular subscription, and I made sure that whenever there was a next contact point, that they checked that. And then as a result, the, the system just naturally cleaned itself out, which is a really useful way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And that then is straight away sort of you can, you know, especially where you can see that we still have a lot of unknowns about that subscription package, there is actually money to be made then by sorting that out. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the big thing for charities and organizations like that. They're strapped for cash anyway. So anything that they can have that will help them just get a few more pennies is, is, is brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, that's primarily the way we used it for NGO. Mm -hmm. If that makes, answers your question. So that was a couple of hundred records as opposed mm -hmm. to thousands. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. at this stage already, you can you can get through those records a mm -hmm. lot quicker than the normal one. Because it's uh, because you can use it in profiles and it's open to batch editing. So yep. if, for example, you're you're missing phone numbers, you can batch edit and flag everybody with yep. a specific who value that doesn't have a phone number. Yes. Okay. Yes. Just one question. Uh, the, this concept of poo, uh, was it your idea or is it something standards in philosophy somewhere? No, it's actually my idea, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the <coughs> the um, profile for, that you showed on there, that's part of the extension you yes. have to build that yourself. Oh, yeah, so it's part of the extension. It's, it will add uh, the fields, the custom fields, and, uh, and the profile and uh, activity type. I'm just wondering, if you add various values of Pew to a number of different fields, what happens to your symbol? Does it get bigger and bigger? It, uh, well, yeah, that's, that, that's also what I'm thinking about uh, for the future. Because at this moment you add a pew field to, to uh, a person, to a contact. Yes, but if you, but if you have different problems uh, within that person, so different fields have a problem, mm. that's, uh, at this moment you just write both of them in, 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 in a pew field. Mm. But I'm thinking about how to actually do that. But well, it's very easy to make a very complex system, but... Uh, yeah. But I really want to have it very clean and simple actually to use and for others to see what actually happens then. Because if every field would have a pew value, then people don't understand it anymore. So that's, well, I could use some help with that as well and some insight in how to do that. But that's what I'm also but thinking about. What the um, chap at the back was saying about yeah. has somebody died, I was thinking as you were talking, I, I had... Um, 
I had a volunteer and I knew her father had died. Okay. And I had a couple with the same surname as her. Okay. But no relationship was flagged and I just didn't know if it was her father or some random wow. other person with the same surname. Yes. Um, now, it, it happened after quite a long while I did speak to her and I said, oh, I don't know if your parents are on our database, can I just check what their names are, you know, to make sure that I, they were actually some random other people. Yes. Which was great. But it was only that I'd had this niggling doubt and I couldn't flag this niggling doubt yes. in a sensible way to everybody else who might be using the database. Yes. So, so this would have yeah. helped you a bit. Yeah. Nice. Okay, someone else? It's very straightforward. So yeah. Really <laughs> <questions>. <laughs> okay, it's an extension, it's on GitHub. I have uh, need some help, I think, of the Civitism community because I have one bug I really like to solve before making an extension, but that should be... Uh, uh, well, it should be solved in a few weeks, and then I'll, I'll write a blog about it as well, then you can, can see it. Or you ask me uh, today and tomorrow, or uh, contact me. Okay, thank you.